Hi, this is section 10.1 on percent. So we'll be looking at um, percents and applications to that. So for this example, it says convert the following fractions to a percent. Divide the numerator by the <coughs> denominator. All right, the numerator is a top number, the denominator is a bottom number. Multiply the decimal number by 100. And then you add a percent sign. That's how you convert your answer to a percent. You multiply the number by 100, and then you add the percent symbol. So let's try this out. If you do 67 divided by 100, that's going to move the decimal over two spaces to the left, which will give you 0 0.67. Then we multiply by 100, and that's going to be 67. And then you add the percent sign at the end. All right, next one, 11 divided by 22 is 0. 0.55, I believe. I'm sorry, by 20. Yeah, that is 0. 0.55. And, of course, we multiply by 100, and that gives you 55. Add the percent sign. That is our final answer. All right, for the next one, we have 15 divided by 6, which if you do that on your calculator, you will get 0. 0.5. 9375. Multiply that by 100, and that gives us 93.75. And you add the percent sign. All right, those are the following answers. All right, let's highlight them. Perfect. Moving on. Convert the following decimal numbers to a percent. Step one is to multiply the decimal by 100. or move the decimal point two units to the right. Then you add a percent sign. All right, so once again, we multiply by 100, or you just move the decimal two spaces to the left, and that gives you 15, add the percent sign. All right, next one, multiply by 100, move the decimal two spaces to the right, 75.6, add the percent sign. And last one, multiply by 100. Wow, that's 223.9%. All right. Now, we're moving on. Convert the following percents to a decimal. So we're going to do the opposite of multiply, which is to divide by 100 or move the decimal point two units to the left. That's the opposite of right, is left. And then we remove the percent sign. So let's do that. If you um, divide by 100, you're going to get 0 0.35, and you remove the percent sign. All right, I forgot to sh highlight these answers. All right, we'll highlight this answer. All right, the next one is uh, if you divide by 100, you're going to move the decimal two spaces to the left, which is 0 0.698. That is your final answer. Next one is going to be, well, I would recommend that you convert that to a, a decimal and it'll make it easier. So one half is 0 0.5. You still have the percent sign. But then when you divide by 100, you're going to move the decimal two spaces to the left. And that's going to be 1, 2. So you're going to have a decimal and then two zeros after. A decimal, two zeros after. That is the final answer. So when it comes to fractions, I highly recommend that you you convert the fraction into a decimal first, then you divide by 100, or move the decimal two spaces to the left, and that is the final answer. All right, so if you do this 5 divided by 8 on your calculator, you should get 0.625. If you multiply by 100 to convert to a, a percent, that's going to move the decimal two spaces to the left. That'll be 62.5%. All right, this one, you multiply by 100, moves the decimal two spaces to the right. That's 45%. Uh, for this one, it's easier to work with this. If you move the decimal two spaces to the left, that gives you the decimal. So that would be 0 0.25. Or alternatively, you could have done this on your calculator. One divided by four is 0 0.25. All right, uh, for this one, I would recommend that you do three divided by four, which is 0 0.75. So that's the same thing as 2.75.
And if you multiply by 100, that'll move the decimal two spaces to the right. 275 would be our final answer for that. All right, so we filled out the entire chart. All right, moving on. Now we're getting into applications. So let's look at this first application. It says, out of 3,496 people who responded, 1017 said that the age of 80 is old. What percent of respondents believe that 80 is old? So we need to find the decimal first. The ratio is 1017 out of 496 people um, think that 80 is old. So if you do that, conver uh, convert that to a decimal on your calculators, you will get... Uh, we're going to round this because it's a it's a long decimal. So we'll say approximately 0.2909. That's good enough. And if we want to convert that to a percent, you multiply by 100, which is moving the decimal place over two spaces to the right gives us 29.09. And don't forget to add the percent sign. Okay. The next one says percent change. The percent increase or decrease over a period of time is determined by the, t the following formula. So let's give you the formula. So the formula is going to be the amount um, in the latest period, we'll call it, minus the amount in the previous period, divided by the amount in the previous period. So that is the formula. And then you would multiply by 100%. 100, and then you add the percent symbol. So let's take a look at the very first example. It says Team A won 51 games in 2004 and 77 games in 2005. Find the percent increase in the number of games won by the Team A from 2004 to 2005. So the amount of games that the team won in the latest period would be 77. So that would be our the first number that we add in the numerator minus the amount made uh, amount of games won in the previous period this would be prior to 2005 that's 51 and then divided by the same thing the amount in the previous period which is 51 then we multiply that by 100 and then we add our percent symbol so this is going to be approximately let's find out 77 minus 51 26 divided by 51 that's going to be about I'm just going to go ahead and keep that number in my in my calculator and then just type type times 100 which is finally going to give me 50.98%. All right. So 50.98% is the percent increase in games won. All right. Number 7, the population of a small mountain town increased from 840, um, I think they meant to say 2882, so I'm just going to change that at word and to 2. What was the percent of increase? So once again, we do the latest number minus the prior number divided by the prior number. All right, and so don't forget to multiply by 100 like I almost did. And that will do it. Let's see what we end up getting. 882 minus 840 divided by 840. I'm getting 0 0.05. Actually, that's equal, not approximately. But after you multiply by 100, that's going to move the decimal two spaces. So you should end up with 5%. So it's a 5% increase going from 840 to 882. All right, the next example says, in 2002, sales were 2,475,000. In 2003, the sales dropped to 1,950,000. What is the percent decrease? So this time, our number should be negative because it's a decrease instead of an increase. So <clears throat> the amount in the latest sales was smaller 
than the amount in the previous cell. So it's going to be a smaller number minus a bigger number, and that, that's why you get the negative number. Divided by the previous amount, which is 2,475. All right, so let's do that times 100. And let's see what we end up getting. So, okay, I'm getting negative 21.21212. It's a repeating decimal, so I'm just going to say approximately because I'm going to round. Um, and then multiply by 100, that's going to move the decimal 20, uh, two spaces to the right, so negative 21.2%. So that is the answer. So it means that there, there was a 21.2% decrease. So a negative means that the percent decreased, and a positive means that the, that the percent increased. <clears throat> All right, let's um, go ahead and move on. Number eight says, <clears throat> the average price of gasoline, which is very um, uh, very relevant to our lives today, from $3.46 to $3.83 in five months, what was the percent increase in the price of gasoline? All right, so the previous, uh, I'm sorry, the latest amount is $3.83. The previous amount was $3.46, and we divide by the previous amount. Multiply by 100. Let's see what this turns out to be. I'm getting uh, an approximation again, but after I'm, I'm just going to round to one decimal, two decimal places is fine. Approximately 10.69. All right, so that's how that was a percent increase in in gas prices. Today it's much higher. All right, Yolanda's present salary is thirty six thousand five hundred. She is getting an increase of seven percent in her next salary year. Uh, what will her new salary be? Can you think of a way to solve this problem using the formula? All right, so this is a bit of a challenge. So let's see. All right, so let's think about this. So she is currently making thirty-six thousand five hundred. If she's going to get an increase of seven percent, let's see what that amount is. So you multiply by point zero seven. That's seven percent, and you should get twenty-five thousand. Um, I'm sorry. I think I added an extra zero. Yeah, I did. Added an extra zero, so it should be. 2,555 increase. So that's the amount of increase. All right. So if you were to add that, you're going to get, you're going to get, let's add that to the previous amount that she used to make. So we should end up with the new amount. All right, and so there you go. Uh, that is her new salary. All right, moving on, moving on. Let's see what the next problem is. So now they talk about percent markup and markdown. So here's the formula that um, for markup and markdown. So it's gonna be the selling price Of an of a object minus the dealer's cost divided by the dealer's cost. So it's got the same kind of format that the previous formula had, and of course you're gonna multiply one hundred again to convert it to a percentage. All right, so a store B a store B pays forty eight dollars and seventy nine cents for the doors. It regularly sells them for $79.88. Find the percent mark up on the regular price. All right, so the markup price is going to look like this. It's going to be the selling price, 
which is $79.88 minus the cost, the, the dealer's cost, because the deal, the store pays $48.79, so that's the cost that they pay, divided by the cost that they pay again, times 100. Let's see what that turns out to be, and we'll round to two decimal places, because that's we want to round to the nearest cent. going to get, after I multiply by 100, $63.72. I'm sorry, not cents, percent. 63.72% <laughs> markup. That's more than double. I mean, sorry, more than half. All right. And the last problem looks like this. To get rid of its remaining 20 10 calendars, Cardin's Pharmacy reduces the price to $4. If Cardin's cost per calendar was $5, determine the percent markdown on the calendars. So this is mark... Oh, I'm sorry, this was not a price. This is a markup percent. So this would be a markdown percent. All right, so we start with... Um, the selling price, which is now four dollars, minus the the cost that it used to that it that they paid for over the cost that they paid for again, times one hundred. Let's see what this turns out to be. This is gonna be negative twenty percent. So that means that there was a twenty percent uh markdown in price. Alright, and that is the end of this section.